Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> this is my name is Sean Berrigan. and I'm Director General of DG FISMA in the Commission in Brussels. And I'm uh, very pleased to be here with you today. And I'd like to thank very much Jean-Francois and the French and German associations for the opportunity to update you on progress in the EU sustainable finance agenda. And uh, it is indeed a very heavy agenda, which you will hear in a moment. But let me start by stating the obvious that the EU and the Commission remains firmly committed to becoming a sustainable economy and to contributing to the, the same object objective at the global level. The target that was set out in the European Green Deal is to make the EU climate neutral by 2050. I think this is evidence of this commitment. It's a highly ambitious target, but of course, climate science suggests that this is the minimum level of ambition that is required. And of course, climate neutrality is only part of the EU sustainability challenge. That challenge also encompasses safeguarding the wider environment, as well as promoting high social and governance standards across the economy. The transition to a sustainable economy will certainly not come cheap. Our estimates suggest that reaching the current 2050 climates alone will require hundreds of billions of euros in new investment every year between now and 2050. And these amounts are clearly beyond the financing capacity of the public sector alone. So it is clear that achieving the EU's targets will require a holistic approach involving both public and private finance. And so it's interesting, and I must say reassuring, to hear Jean-Francois's opening remarks today. All EU policies must contribute to the achievement of sustainability by channeling all sectors of our economy in this direction. And policies relating to sustainable finance or responsible investment will have a key role to play in this regard. Thankfully, we, again, as Jean-Francois mentioned, we see a growing appetite in the private sector for sustainable finance and responsible investment. And the Commission has set about providing a coherent framework within which the financial system can help to satisfy that appetite. In summary terms, the, the sustainable finance framework that we're putting in place comprises three main components. And these are a taxonomy, which defines and classifies economic activities in terms of their sustainability. Secondly, a public disclosure regime, which informs investors of the sustainability of their investments. And then a suite of instruments and tools like bonds, labels, benchmarks, etc., which will further facilitate investors in their efforts to invest sustainably. Now, since 2018, the EU and Commission has taken major steps to put this framework in place, albeit not always in perfect sequential order. We have in place the taxonomy regulation, we have a sustainable finance disclosure regulation and the benchmark regulation. And I'll go down through just each of these in, in turn now. The taxonomy regulation has classified a wide range of economic activities in terms of climate and wider environmental objectives. That regulation, of course, drew heavily on science-based advice from a technical expert group. So it is heavily science-based. And the Commission has, of course, established now a platform of experts which will further develop and expand the taxonomy going forward. With the help of this platform, the Commission is now specifying more technical criteria for classifying activities under the taxonomy through so-called delegated acts or secondary legislation. The first of these delegated acts dealing with climate mitigation and climate adaptation uh, objectives has been agreed by the Commission and is currently under the scrutiny of the European Parliament and the Council. So the taxonomy is coming into place. The, the Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation has established common rules for how institutional investors inform their clients about sustainability aspects of their investments. The disclosure rules in that regulation cover potential sustainability risks that could affect the value of their investments, how those risks are being managed, the potential adverse impact of investments on the environment or broader society, and lastly, how sustainable products deliver their green or sustainable objectives. The SFRD, or the Sustainable Finance,
uh, supporting directive is designed to improve the quality of information available about the sustainability impact of investment products. So this is to allow investors to make better informed decisions and to mitigate the risk of so-called greenwashing in the market. And this greater transparency supports further growth of the market. And it's already evident, I think, that end investors are showing a greater appetite for responsible and sustainable investments. And that is reassuring already. The SF4D, of course, will be accompanied by regulatory technical standards jointly developed by the Commission, sorry, by the three European supervisory authorities first. And then based on these RTS, the Commission will put in place secondary legislation or again delegated acts, which will become applicable from the 1st of January 2022. So again, the sustainable, the first part of the disclosure regime is coming into place. The third item I mentioned from the 2018 plan was, of course, the benchmark regulation, and that introduces climate transition benchmarks and EU Paris aligned benchmarks with a methodology based on the commitments of the Paris Agreement. Now, these benchmarks will again support the allocation of capital towards a low carbon, climate resilient economy and the EU Green Deal to reach net zero emissions by 2050. We've also introduced sustainability disclosures for benchmark administrators. And here the aim is to increase transparency on sustainability information of the benchmarks themselves, and so increase investors' confidence, again, in sustainable investment. We are also considering the possibility to create an EU ESG benchmark label, which should focus not only on the environmental component, but also on the social and governance aspects. And in that regard, by the end of 2022, we will present a report to the Parliament and Council, and if appropriate, we will accompany that report with a legislative proposal. And then finally, in this area of benchmarks, by the end of next year, we will review the minimum standards for the two EU climate benchmarks to ensure that the selection of the underlying assets is in fact consistent with the EU taxonomy, which has been put in place. So this is what we were doing from 2018 plan. Now, more, more recently, on the 21st of April, the Commission proposed further important elements of the EU sustainable finance framework. I will call this the April package for convenience, but this April package included the first delegate act for the climate objectives of the taxonomy regulation, which I've already mentioned already. Now, this delegate act covers a wide swathe of economic activities and gives technical criteria for defining their greenness or their sustainability. I have to say coverage of certain key sectors, notably agriculture, nuclear, gas, could not be adopted now and have been deferred until uh, another delegate act after the summer. And then there will be another delegate act early next year, covering the four environmental objectives under the taxonomy regulation, which um, will then mean that the entire regulation is in place by mid-2022. The April package also includes a proposal for a corporate sustainable reporting directive, which revises the non-financial reporting directive, which is already in place. The effect of this new corporate uh, sustainable uh, reporting directive will be to widen the scope of sustainability reporting to all listed companies, including listed SMEs, but not micro SMEs. It will establish formal reporting standards. It will ensure that sustainability reports are machine readable and will require that sustainable information is audited. And then finally, the April package included six amending delegated acts on fiduciary duties, investment and insurance advice and here the objective is again to allow investors to make informed investment decisions in line with their climate and environmental preferences. And these delegate acts are also now under the scrutiny of the Parliament and the Council. So last April, we took another big step forward in putting in place this, this framework. So if we now look to what's left, well, we'll see that the sustainable finance agenda, unfortunately for me, remains very, very full. So we still have a lot to do. In the summer, we will, ad all, we will advance a proposal to establish uh, an official European green bond standard, building on the work of the technical expert group on sustainable finance and explicitly linked to the EU taxonomy. 
So to deliver on our commitment of net zero by 2050, we need this EU green bond standard. We need to have a solid green credentials. So to that end, 100% of proceeds from issuing green bonds, according to our EU green bond standard, will be used to finance activities that comply with the system criteria in the tax. So it's closely tied to the taxonomy. And this link with the EU taxonomy will also allow economic sectors in transition to enter the green bond market, thereby bringing more assets into play and expanding the size of the market. And I think this could be a game changer for sustainable finance going forward. The standard will be voluntary and it will be open to both corporate and sovereign issuers. It will also be possible for issuers in third countries to align their bond issuance with the standard, subject, of course, to meeting the standards requirements. We're also exploring a potential regime for the authorization and supervision of companies acting as external reviewers of green bonds. So this again is that would be designed to increase trust in the green bond market, ensure the integrity of the standards and the broader market. The EU green bond standard will also bring additional benefits as it will standardize the stream and streamline costly and complex verification and reporting processes. I think an official standard will make it easier to attach potential economic incentives to help offset the additional costs of issuing a green bond. And fly, finally, we're exploring the possible extension of the eco-label criteria to financial products, again, to promote increased flows of investment to green financial products, which will positively support our efforts to reach the climate goals. I think similar to the proposed EU global bond standard, the eco-label will allow retail investors to rely on a trusted and credible third-party verified label when investing in green financial products. And again, this will help to mitigate the risk of greenwashing. Based on feedback we received from public consultations, we are also considering a possible initiative on the prospectus regulation, so to enhance the comparability, transparency, and harmonization of information provided in the prospectus for ESG-related securities. In the course of this year, we also assess certain aspects of sustainability research and decide on whether an intervention in this field is necessary to make that research more widely available. And we're also looking at the market for ESG ratings providers. This has grown rapidly over past years and is still growing. A study we commissioned recently has highlighted that there are a number of issues about the functioning of ratings, in particular in relation to transparency of operations and methodologies. And so we're reflecting on whether any intervention might be required here. But again, this must be balanced against the sort of the costs of such interventions uh, relative to the benefits. So we will be proportionate in that respect. So all of these initiatives I've just mentioned looking forward, we will present in the next phase of the sustainable finance strategy, which we will put on the table before this. We hope it will provide a cross-cutting roadmap, new actions to increase private investment, and in sustainable projects and activities and to support different actions set out in the EU Green Deal. But also we will use it to demonstrate, as I said, the overall coherence of the strategy, which is coming in place, not perhaps in the expected sequential order, but is still coming in place. We also want to use this strategy to look at ways to increase the resilience of the financial system and financial institutions to climate and environmental risks and to support market participants and supervisors in identifying and managing all those risks. And I think lastly, the next phase of sustainable finance is an opportunity to ensure that the recovery from the COVID-19 crisis delivers the green transition that we want and actually prevents the risk of a similar disruption to the economy coming this time from uncontrolled climate change. I just want to finish, and I know I'm close to the end of my time, by highlighting the EU's commitment to the coordinated efforts at international level. I think the prospects for international coordination of the climate finance has, uh, are increasingly promising, notably now that the United States has re-entered the consensus on addressing climate change. Now, in October 2019, we launched the International Platform on Sustainable Finance as a kind of multilateral forum to coordinate change, compare best practices, et cetera, in the area of sustainable finance. This platform now has a critical mass of policymakers. It's spread across 17 jurisdictions, includes China, UK, Japan, India, Canada, 
I can go on. The members are responsible for about 55% of global emissions, uh, roughly the same amount of global GDP. And through the work on this platform, we hope to address the risk of fragmented sustainable finance practices and policies across the globe, which of course would be detrimental to global financial integration that could create serious fragmentation. So we want to address that risk. And now in addition to that work with the US back, we see the G7, the G20, the Financial Stability Board all becoming active in this field. And of course the commission is an active participant in those four as well. So we will be engaged also, not just at EU level, but at the international level as well. So let me conclude by just recalling that the Commission you know, has obviously a very full agenda on sustainable finance. So you will be busy over the coming years, like we will be. The agenda is not only full, but it's also urgent if we're to reach the, uh, the climate and wider sustainability, object sustainability objectives that we've set ourselves. I think the sustainable finance agenda in particular is recognition that these objectives require a collective effort of both the public sector and private sector actors like yourselves. And that's why conferences like this one are for us very important. So once again, I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak to you today. And I want to thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much.